Dendrobium tortile! We have work to do! Quite a few months ago, I promised a cut of this orchid to Fernanda from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents. And here are your keikis, Michael, from Honeybees and Orchids. Nice roots. They get watered every day. When they're not ready to come off yet, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Just because the roots are doing great, I want a little bit more on the leaf front. But here are your keikis doing well. Right, so a cut. Yes, and a cut sooner than later, I would say, because this orchid is doing extremely well. As you can see from when we took it off the mount, I had some whatever grass growing in it. I've had some mealybug damage that I've got under control, but the marks will stay for quite some time. Sorry about that, Fernanda. But these are the growths that were coming out. These guys standing up here, they were coming out and they were smaller than these guys here when I repotted it in that video. So they're doing well and they're curving towards the light, which I used to grow this pendant, but it became far too big to accommodate its care in my very dry Mediterranean climate. Hence, I potted it up. But look, it's doing more. I've got one, two, three, four, five, or let's say five, six, seven new growths coming as a second flush for the season. So it's doing great in the setup. So <laughs> yeah, that's what's making me work on it today to get it cut so that it hasn't got in itself super duper established by the time I have to actually cut it and send it. I still have enough in the season left for it to establish itself now that it's got roots going down in the pot, but also to establish a second cut before shipping. And that's what we're going to do today. I need some good juju here because I am kind of concerned trying to disturb something that is really, really doing well. A promise is a promise. I need some good juju. So let's go. Look at that. So well rooted in, I struggled to get the tag out. Okay, I've got some serious, serious concentrating to do. I might not be as chitty chatty. I have to watch out for cakey roots, cakeys, plus new growth, plus new roots, and somehow divide this plant. Yeah, it, you might just hear some music for a little bit. We got that part done. Look at this. Oh, Fernanda, Fernanda, now's the time. Look at these roots. I'm talking about the new ones. <laughs> Look at this. Good time, Fernanda. We got to get this done. Got to separate them and then make sure that I have one nice healthy one to send to you. I suppose people would say, why didn't you wait until the keikis were harvested? And I'm like, well, I don't have the time. You can see how well it's doing. I need to do something about it now. Otherwise, it's going to not have time to adjust itself until, goodness me, it ha until it gets sent, whenever that will be. So let's see. Fernando, Fernando, let's have a look. see where I can separate it. I'm sorry, but some growths will have some mealybug damage. But I can kind of see a good division point down here. If it blooms, it'll bloom on these two old ones. I'll show you when we're done. First of all, I need to get this separated. I know where I'm going to go. Isn't this a thing of beauty? It's 
You know what? I was just going to chop all these roots off, but I'm not going to. They still feel firm. They don't look as shiny and new as the other ones, but they feel firm. That's what this is about. Okay. Again, I'm just checking where I can cut with the least amount of disturbance to everything that you see underneath. Okay, I've split it. Fernanda, that's it. I took the cut that was easiest and now we'll just have to see what comes of it as I take it apart. Who is going where? This has got to be the hardest division I've ever done. There is so much going on. There is so much going on everywhere. I wonder if I've left it too late because there is so much going on. But I didn't want to divide it when I repotted it because I wanted to make sure that it would actually take to the setup and boy did it take Here you can see all the remnants of the stuff that was in it before the roots of that grass that was growing in it. Okay, who's going where? Come on. You're making it hard here. You're making it hard. It's like working with three eyes. Watching the keikis, watching the new growth at the base, trying not to destroy the roots too much. Again, I'm a little bit comforted by the fact that it is doing so well. Fernanda, here we go. 
I am comforted by the fact that it's doing so well. So I know we still have plenty of time. Oh, babe, I lost a route there. Sorry. I still have. We still have time to establish either way. Now one route has gotten all clever and gone in there. Let's get. I was going to say cut this cane away, but I'm not going to. This is stressful at best for the plant, so any structure is welcome. I'll talk you through what I've got here, Fernando, once I can see what I've got. I'm not trying to be all sneaky or suspenseful or anything, but right now, I can't tell you. <laughs> I got two pieces. All right, that root tip has just compromised. Ah! No way. Let's have a look. Here's the cakey piece. I'll be keeping the cakey piece because I do not know how long they will take to be good for harvesting, Fernanda. But uh, I can tell you this much. You will not be getting one that's infested with mealybugs. I'll be watching carefully, okay? I watch this every day. I'm at it constantly. So I do preventative treatment. So this would be your piece because the other one has the K keys. And as I don't know when I'm going to harvest them, and I don't know when I'm going to ship this, I am not going to be like, oh, I still have to harvest the K keys. Okay, so the no K key piece goes to you. Let's have a look. Let's see what Fernanda has here. Let's check this out. Now, because they've been used to such a wet environment, I'm continuously misting so that I can film this without making the roots get stressed and stop growing. So that's what you hear now. Let's have a look, Fernando, what did we manage to organize here? I know that you don't grow the same way I do. You might actually want to mount this. So there'll be two aerial roots here. I will, for the duration of having it here to grow on, I will put these into LECA and self-watering. Push comes to shove, there's two gorgeous aerial roots. There are three new canes that grew early in the season. So that's these three. And there's two new ones pushing out like stragglers, but they should do well because this one doesn't just stop growing when it gets cold. There is some mealybug damage from previously. I'm sorry. I have to keep, um, just one moment. As I'm handling this, I have to keep my hands wet because it is hot. I don't want the salty sweat to affect the roots. So that's, I keep dust, uh, misting my hands as well. Right, so you know, an old storage cane, I'm leaving that on. And then it's possible that these two canes here, these ones will bloom for you next year. They didn't bloom this year, but come spring, these are your candidates for blooming. The new canes won't. This year's growth will not bloom until spring 2022. So let's get little Fernanda into her pot. Fernanda Tortile, what do you think? So before we get any uh, further here, there's just a little small matter of cinnamon to take care of. I'm not fiddling with that centerpiece. I'm very, very wary of messing around too much. I'm not going to fiddle too much with this. I want to get it into a pot as soon as possible and pretend like nothing has happened and hope that it also feels as though whoop, nothing's happened and just continues to do well. That's one. This is definitely some maneuvering here. Definitely. 
Watch out with cinnamon around roots. It can go horribly, horribly wrong. And my worry is that I'm going to do something here and the roots stop growing. But as it's going back into a moist environment, and the fact that it has that matted root system from that grass that was in it before, I am risking cinnamon on an area where there's lots of roots. Not too comfortable with it, but it has to be done. It smells nice though. <laughs> first things first. So I'm constantly spraying as I work. I'm staying far away from that cinnamon area with my sprayer. I know I'm in the shade, but today we are having a hot day. High humidity though, which is great. So I'm just putting it back to let it grow a little bit more on its in its own right. And then Fernanda, it will be on its way and I might need to stake it. What do you think? What do you think? I stake it? No, I won't stake it. It'll be fine because I'm not going to move it. There's no real reason to be moving this one. What I can do is fill up the reservoir with some nice, yummy fertilizer. And then Fernanda, she is almost, almost on her way. There we go. We did it. Oh, but I have to take care of mommy plant as well. So I'll be right back. So that would be it for Tortile Fernanda. But it would be unfair of me not to give the similar attention to the mummy plant with the keikis. We still need those keikis to thrive and then they're off to learn all about honeybees and orchids. So there we go. Let's have a look. Now if you've been also watching my previous videos, you may be wondering why I don't do a Michael mount or a ninja mount with this one. It's too big. It's getting too big. Even the cut now, it's growing really well. And still we have some mealybugs. So, Michael, Fernanda, Dendrobium tortile is a gorgeous orchid. I love growing her. She lives outside in my climate until at least it's five degrees Celsius. That's the lowest it gets in my climate. So she can get as big and blousy and bushy as she wants. I do not care. She is not a space consumer whatsoever. She might get big, but hey, in the winter, I don't need to accommodate indoor space. But yes, watch out for the mealybugs, at least in my climates for whatever reason. This one is enjoyed by mealybugs. It is very annoying. So let's just see how deep that reservoir will be. That's a bit much. There we go. And in you go. Whew, this one's making me nervous. I was very nervous about doing this because I have so much going on. I managed to des destroy, well, co compromise three roots. None on the keikis. Didn't break a new growth. I think, I think that's actually pretty good going considering. So keeping the fingers crossed that all of it will just think nothing at all happen. My cinnamon cut is over here. Got to keep that in mind as I fill her up. I am so happy these roots are going down so well into this environment here. This setup is going to be fabulous for her. I have never had two flushes of growth in one season ever. So for me, that's already proof that it can take it, it can hold it, and I can actually take care and grow this orchid into a big, big one. Under these circumstances, yeah. 
using the same media. Just keeping a watchful eye of what I put around that cinnamon area. I don't want to have a moist letter bead touching it. At least not for the next 48 hours. All right, let's clean up around you. These are also branching roots, which is great. Damage that I may have done can be forgiven, I guess, by the plant. So I've already put Fernanda back. I'm going to put Mum back as well. And then let's have a look where they're going to live side by side in perfect harmony until one is on a road trip to good old Portugal. Woohoo! Permanent vacation. How exciting. And here we are in my prime real estate on my little quaint flower stand, pot stand with the little hearts there. Isn't that so cute? But here is Mommy Portile and Fernanda Tortile in the corner there. And I've put her there because when these were growing in the same pot, I was training the new canes to try and cascade them over to the front so I don't have a 360 degree plant and it's working. And the same for Fernanda here. Those new growths are starting to come and cascade over to this side of the pot, as you can see. And I would like to continue to encourage that so that when they do bloom, she has them all in order. It's these two canes back here that I believe will bloom next year. I don't know. I've never divided a tortilla before. I don't know how they react or respond, but my goodness, we saw the roots and surely all we need is like two roots to do well, right? So we've got aerial roots and we've got great roots in the pot. And if only two of those roots in the pot do well after this, at least we can keep the plant alive and then grow it to a stronger one. Phase one. Fernanda, we've done it. Here is your portile. Thank you everybody so much for watching. The fun side of growing orchids. They are abundant, they are generous, they are beautiful, and we can share them. So with that being said, from Catlia Zagari Wax, African Beauty and myself, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in next video. I appreciate having you here. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.